President Trump and the White House physician, Dr. Ronnie Jackson. Dr. Jackson said on Tuesday that the president was in excellent health. Carolyn Cast Associated Press want to get this briefing by email. Here's the sign-up. Good morning. Here's what you need to know. Arresting collapse of spy network. It was one of the U.S. Intelligence services' worst failures in years. China dismantled American spying operations and killed or imprisoned more than a dozen CIA informants since 2010. Now, an American is suspected of having helped Beijing by identifying informants. Jerry Chan Xing Li, who left the CIA in 2007, was apprehended at Kennedy Airport this week. Read the affidavit supporting charges against him. Officials are concerned that the case could represent a pattern of Chinese intelligence targeting former agency employees. A new bargaining chip Republicans hoping to stave off a government shutdown this weekend are pairing a stopgap spending measure with long-term funding for the popular Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP, effectively daring Democrats to vote no. The bill would not address the future of the so-called Dreamers, the hundreds of thousands of young immigrants brought to the country illegally as children. But it would provide CHIP, which covers nearly 9 million children, with funding for six years. Expanding the scope of nuclear retaliation A Pentagon plan that has been sent to President Trump for approval would permit the use of nuclear weapons to respond to a wide range of devastating but non-nuclear assaults, including cyber attacks. The document casts a bleak picture of U.S. national security threats, citing not only Russian and Chinese nuclear advances but also ones by North Korea and, potentially, Iran. Separately, Japan's public broadcaster accidentally sent news alerts on Tuesday that North Korea had launched a missile, just days after the government of Hawaii sent a similar warning. Torture, not teaching, at California Homeschool The house near Los Angeles where 13 siblings, some shackled and emaciated, were held captive by their parents was also being used as a state-approved school. The case raises questions about whether California is too lenient in its approach to homeschooling, and whether it should have been monitoring David Turpin, the father and supposed principal, more closely. The parents, both arrested on nine counts of torture and child endangerment, remain in jail. Trump is declared of sound mind and body. The White House physician said on Tuesday that President Trump's overall health was excellent, and that the president had received a perfect score on a test to screen for neurological impairment. The physician, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, said that Mr. Trump, 71, had asked for the cognitive test to try to quell questions about his mental abilities, Dr. Jackson also said that the president weighed 239 pounds and was too sedentary. Stephen Bannon to testify President Trump's former chief strategist was subpoenaed last week by the special counsel to testify before a grand jury as part of the investigation into possible links between Mr. Trump's associates in Russia. It is the first time Robert Mueller, the special prosecutor, is known to have used a grand jury subpoena to seek information from a member of the presidency in a circle, but it could be just a negotiating tactic, our reporter notes, and doesn't mean Mr. Bannon is the focus of the inquiry. The Daily A Senate committee hearing on border security turned into a fight over how President Trump described some countries, and Stephen Bannon is subpoenaed in the Russia investigation. Business Americans are warming to the Republican tax law and are increasingly confident in the economy, according to a new poll. They just aren't sure that President Trump deserves much credit. 21 states have filed a suit against the Federal Communications Commission, saying the agency's recent repeal of so-called net neutrality rules was arbitrary and capricious. It's time for Apple to build a less addictive iPhone, our technology columnist writes. U.S. Stocks were down on Tuesday. Here's a snapshot of global markets today. Smarter living tips, both new and old, for a more fulfilling life, you've been asked to be a bridesmaid. Now what? Observing, dry January. Here are six alcohol-free cocktails, recipe of the day wild rice and mushroom casserole will feed a crowd in style. Noteworthy partisan writing you shouldn't miss writers from across the political spectrum discuss President Trump's recent comments on immigration, in memoriam Matilde Krim, a geneticist and virologist, crusaded against AIDS for decades, raising money and awareness about a disease that has killed more than 39 million people worldwide. She was 91, a haunted site for gymnasts after Simone Biles and others said they had been molested by the national team doctor at a training center in Texas, USA. Gymnastics needs a new home, our sports columnist writes. A workout session at the Carolee Ranch in Texas, the training center for USA Gymnastics. 
Bob Lavigetti Images Traditional Tastes or Food section This week is all about Canada. A new generation of cooks and scholars is reclaiming and spreading the cuisine of the country's indigenous people. Susan Nottaway, an Algonquin who runs a catering business, smokes moose meat using a method she learned from her grandmothers. Breno Philippe for the New York Times Philip Roth still has plenty to say on an interview with the Times. The former novelist recalls his 50-plus years as a writer, exhilaration and groaning, frustration and freedom, inspiration and uncertainty, abundance and emptiness, blazing forth and muddling through. Philip Roth, at his home on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Philip Montgomery for the New York Times Best of Late Night TV The comedy hosts were surprised by the results of President Trump's physical exam. Quotation of the day, we talked about diet and exercise a lot. He's more enthusiastic about the diet part than the exercise part, but we're going to do both. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, the White House physician, on President Trump, the Times, in other words, shares an image of today's front page, and links to our opinion content and crossword puzzles. Backstory, color, said Louis Comfort Tiffany, is to the eye what music is to the ear. Tiffany, who died on this day 85 years ago, was the son of the founder of Tiffany Co., the famous jeweler. But the younger Tiffany found his own success as an artist and designer, most famous for his work with stained glass. Tiffany stained glass at a hotel in Mexico City. A ubiquitous work, via Getty Images in 1881, he helped redesign the interior of a house in Hartford, Connecticut, owned by Mark Twain, who was making his name after the publication of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The work was followed a year later by a commission with a much higher profile redecorating the White House. Chester Arthur had been thrust into office after the assassination of President James Garfield in 1881. He hired Tiffany to remodel the executive mansion to suit his refined tastes. Tiffany redecorated several rooms, and he also installed a large stained glass screen in the entrance hall. But his mark on the White House did not last. Twenty years later, in 1902, President Theodore Roosevelt ordered a major renovation that swept away the building's Victorian touches, including Tiffany's screen. Underscore 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 your morning briefing is published weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern and updated all morning. Browse past briefings here. If photographs appear out of order, please download the updated New York Times app from iTunes or Google Play. What would you like to see here? Contact us at briefing at nighttimes.com. You can get the briefing dirt to your inbox Sunday through Friday. We have four global editions, timed for the Americas, Europe, Asia and Australia, and an evening briefing on weeknights. Check out our full range of free newsletters here. Follow Chris Stanford on Twitter at Stanford.